and welcome back to Robbie's Arcade. Well, it's time for another classic. And by classic, this is a game I think that passed a lot of people by. It's one of those games like The Last Blade and Chrono Trigger and games that the people that know it love it to pieces. It is an incredible game. But it's one of those names that just doesn't get enough credibility. People don't really hear this about the game that much. When they hear the name Metal Slug, nothing really comes to them. It only really occurs to people that have played the game. They probably remember seeing it in the game, but they're really getting their hands on it. Visually, it's stunning. I mean, look at this. We haven't even started playing yet. And this is just the demo that runs in the background. It's an insane game. There's so much going on. And I'll be honest, I've been looking forward to putting this on the channel for a while because this is a game that's spawned multiple versions. I believe they're up to version uh, Metal Slug 7 with countless conversions and different subversions of 1 to 7. So, let's get into this game. It utilises the Neo Geo arcade platform, one of the few arcade platforms at the time that utilised a cartridge system. And that's, you know, a cartridge system like at home. And this was a 193 megabit cartridge. And I know what you're thinking, 193. How bloody precise is that? And you're right. It is a painfully precise number, but it's the truth. It was released in 1996, and it's both a single player and co-op game. And look at that counter. I don't know why that's on screen, but let's play this game, shall we? Again, there's two characters, but it doesn't really matter who you play. And once again, the controls very straightforward indeed. So, without further ado, let's start Metal Slug. So the game itself is a walk-along shoot-em-up. Um, War-based, I think that's fair to say. Um, if you're hit once, you die. And you fire, quite frankly, in menacingly insane amounts of bullets. If you're getting close proximity, you connect the knife weapon, and now we have a flamethrower. How disgusting is this game? Now, once again, I think it's worth highlighting that this game, at the, t at the time of its release, was just insanely popular. There was no game like it. This is one of those games that did very well both in the East and the West. A rare thing. Normally a game has to do particularly well in one or the other before you know someone's prepared to invest heavily in an arcade machine. Now for a start, the visuals are stunning. Not just the explosions and the fact that, you know, we've got almost like an, our own war movie that's in here. But also the frames per second. Now at the time people didn't really think much in terms of frames per second when it came to games. Oh dear, we died. Um, luckily we've got enough, cut, uh, enough credits in this game not to worry too much about that. And here we are. This I believe is actually known as the Metal Slug Vehicle. Now there is a button for grenade. We'll do that in a bit. These gentlemen here that give you freebies. And I believe our metal slug may be on its last leg. Now, we do have artillery shells, of course, as you can see, which are causing quite an insane amount of damage. And here we are, here we are at the flight deck, I want to say. Just the sheer scale of this game was breathtaking. Well, I believe, yep, we've defeated this ugly thing. It's gone. Let's see what happens next, shall we? I haven't played this game in quite a while, so there we are. It lets you know how many you've captured. It even names the bloody POWs and gives you a bonus throughout. There were lots of ways in this. Uh, throughout the levels of quite sort of free credits as well at the end of the game too. There were just little things like that. This game was heavily based on playability. And it was one of those games at the time that 
arcade, let's face it, it's no secret that arcades designed for you to put money into them. If they weren't designed with that in mind, why would anyone make them? You know, it's it's a business like any other. But Metal Slug seems to put playability as the priority. The game itself plays very well indeed. Now I'm hoping my character has at least a jump uh, animation that's going to help me do this. Because otherwise I am in trouble. Oh, that's see. Should have seen that coming. And here we go. Let's see how many of these paratroopers I can burn alive. Which, I'll be honest, isn't a nice setting. Let's be honest, it's pretty sick. And two dead soldiers later. Not being able to shoot diagonally is a bit of a bummer, I won't say. Anyone remember the game um, Gunstar Heroes? This feels not dissimilar to that. Oh no, apparently my character can't swim. I'll be honest, bit of a wuss. And now we've got a rocket launcher. Oof, had past tense. Now let's use some of these grenades, shall we? Because I think we're actually going to need them. And we've got our rocket launcher back, which is all oh, lovely. Nice. And I think we're going to need that other bit. Oh dear. That was just plain foolish on my part. I do like the idea that I can still jump on these vehicles. Oh no. Or I could just do something as retarded as that. Sorry to use the R word. Awful, awful man. Rocket launcher. No, no climbing above for me. And we're out of grenades, I believe. No, we're not. Oh. Shotgun. Here we go, All right. Shotgun on. The fact that these enemies are just exploding in a hail of dust is pretty disgusting. Am I right in thinking of shotgun just with the tank on? That happened, right? Okay. Let's see what the PO did. W got for me. I think I was better off with a shotgun, would you agree? Again, the game is very fun to play, I should say. I personally would rate this as the Neo Geo doesn't exactly, for me, have a huge reputation of excellence. It was a hugely overexpensive console, and the arcade games like, um, um, what is it, something that's like the Black and the King of Titans, there we go, weren't hugely impressive. Capcom even went to the trouble of creating an SNK versus Street Fighter game using a lot of the Street Fighter asset of Street Fighter 3. I should really think of that on the channel. But anyway, let's port this game and talk about some of the facts. Because let's face it, Metal Slug, for all its fantastic playability, it's going to have a history of ups and downs. Now, the game has been ported to numerous platforms. I mean, quite stunningly large numbers of platforms. It's been featured on the Neo Geo CD, the Neo Geo AES, Sega Saturn, PlayStation, even the Virtual Console, PlayStation Network, iOS and Android mobile platforms, as well as Neo Geo X, with the Wii, PlayStation Portable, PSP, PS2, and now PlayStation 4, all featuring versions of the game. Now, several animations of the player shooting and throwing things in several directions while facing an alternate direction existed in the game's code. It appears that at some point very early on in development of Metal Gear Slug 1, it gave you the ability to throw slugs and shoot behind you. Something that would have been insanely useful because one of the few faults I'd give this game so far is a lack of ability to continue and shoot in one direction while running backwards. Something that would have been very, very useful indeed. Yes, it might have made the game easier, who knows, but 
such a feature and functionality would have been great if that was introduced in the original release. And the fact that exists, as well as the ability to release a parachute, apparently in the original code, I think would have improved the game even more. Still features, I should add, that were introduced in later Metal Slug 3, 4 and X. Uh, on top of that, one of the companies who helped create this first Metal Slug game was a company called Nazca. Now, they didn't actually, they were so new and out of the box that Nazca didn't even have an official logo at the moment of this game being released. Consequently, their logo, and there's no mention of them apart from in text in a few places, anywhere in the original arcade machine of Metal Slug. But after that, their name did feature in later games and re-releases. However, their logo was still not used. They created two logos, a static and an animated, and even their own jingle, but neither of which were used in the actual game. There's an unused jingle in the original code of this because it was unfinished, the application of that logo. But on the whole, the game itself, they, that to me seems a tremendous slap in the face when a company involved in such a huge game gets barely the name check they deserve. Now, there were plans to port Metal Slug to probably the smallest platform of all, um, of all of the ones it was meant to be going towards, and that was the Game Boy Advanced. It was mentioned in development actions as well as trade shows as well in uh, a year or two after release. However, the official SNK website um, states that it, due to its limited memory size, the big thing that's killed so many conversions at, uh, of arcade games in the past to home consoles, the memory size of the Game Boy Advance just wasn't enough to, for this game to run on the Game Boy or Game Boy Advance, and it was cancelled. Halfway through development, and people were very excited about it, because a portable version of this didn't arrive for a long, long time. And a game like this, this pick-up-and-play mentality that these days we take advantage of in mobile gaming, was not made readily available at the time. And again, memory, memory, memory. That will always be the thing that plagued old consoles, your 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit, 64, etc, etc. Um, now, last point, there was actually an online version of Metal Slug made available, Metal Slug Zero Online. It was meant to predate all the other Metal Slugs, and it was an online game that had multiple players. You may notice it on the graphic there, just at the bottom. Sadly, uh, it was developed by a company called Dragonfly, uh, and another company called Wizhands, and SNK Playmore for the South Korean market. Now, there's no word on the Japanese or American release of this game, largely because when the game was uh, on course for release in 2009, um, in that summer, Dragonfly suspended development of that game because they thought that what they were trying to achieve and the relationship they had with Wizhands was far below its expectations and the product itself was not living up to the quality standard they thought would be acceptable. A rare thing these days, people normally push product out regardless of quality. And consequently, the game ended its development cycle in 2013. So the online game ended by then, to many people's disappointment. I say that, if it had been that popular, it would have been released by now. But once again, for the cult following that Metal Slug has, I'm pretty sure that pissed off a number of people. But let's get back into the game, shall we? And just in time for me to die. It's a bit annoying. Now, see, this is an area where that angle hit... Uh, Angle combat would have been very, very helpful indeed. But that said, this is a great little game. I personally, I kind of wish they'd made an online component of this game. I think this would have done very well as an online game with meeting people online. Because right now, this has hints of Metal Slug about it. I'm not sure what these arrows mean. Whether there's something they're supposed to shoot, who knows? Right now, I'm going to take this boss on with just the pistol and see how that fares for me. Oh no, apparently that's not going to fare so hot. Oof, this is going to be annoying. Let's see if these grenades are going to help me out. Oh dear. the problem when you have too many credits and continues, you don't take the game seriously enough. And the result is you end up going through lives like a cat at Halloween. It's craziness. But, do you know what? I'm going to wrap things up there. 
If you've enjoyed Metal Slug, then do let me know any other games that you want to see here on Robbie's Arcade and give them a playthrough and maybe just let me know some of the facts. Maybe I missed some stuff. But otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching.